that. But, uh, Marnie, look, at this stage, you know, I know that Raph's got the heart of a fighter. I know Lee Shi Chan, one of the one of the best players to pick up a, a deck of cards here. And neither of them, I know, I know this, will be happy with their current position in, uh, in league play. Yeah, these players, they're very competitive. Honestly, you don't get to the level of play that either of them have gotten to in a game like Magic the Gathering without being inherently competitive people. And even in a league this hard... Being relegated is not something a competitive player wants to happen. It's not no, something that they're no, going to be happy not. about. Both of them were go- are going to be giving it their all in the upcoming half season left or so to try to prevent that from happening. Uh, and Raph here bringing the best deck, or at least one of the decks that was best uh, expected to be uh positioned for the weekend in this mono white snow deck uh, against Lee's more. Uh, non-traditional choice of cycling yeah and a, and a non-traditional build of it as well we've seen boros cycling we've seen jeskai cycling this is straight up four color cycling with black in order to cast that card you see there in the middle of the uh, the key cards there memory leak now this is not gonna happen very often let's make that very clear it's not gonna happen very often but lee has decided that it's free to play black pathways rather than basics in order to have access to the bad thought sees every now and again and you know, some of the times that's going to pay off. Other time, maybe you do pay a bit of a cost for it. But uh, by the same token, when a deck doesn't have particularly stringent mana requirements, pathways are about the best dual lands, quote unquote, that you can get. Because, you know, if you're playing a deck that only needs like, like the, the classic example that, that occurs to me is remember when Mono White was splashing red for heroic enforce, reinforcements? Yeah. You needed like one red source, right? Ever. So pathways in that sort of situation are perfect in that uh, they are just a basic planes almost every time, but then they are the red source when you need them without having to pay two life or jump through any other hoops to make sure they come to play untapped. So Lee has decided that it's not a, a high cost to pay. Raphael, on the other hand, as a monocolor deck, is a, a, able to take advantage of this new card money, uh, Faceless Haven, which, as it turns out, has had a massive impact on deck construction post Calhoun. Yeah, Faceless Haven, the sole determining factor in what is really encouraging aggressive decks to stay monocolored and try to go for these powerful strategies a a four three colorless creature land is just something that is so powerful uh that your opponents just can't interact with that well so i i think it's no surprise that or it was certainly some surprise because people didn't expect it to be this good but now that we're seeing it in action it makes perfect sense that well of course Faceless Haven is seeing this much play. Of course it's this good, because we should have known that it was going to be this good. So an attack now. Flourishing Fox, always very threatening, especially when it's cast on turn number one here. Difficult card to block at the best of times here. Yeah, it, Li Shitian is going to be aware of the copies of Giant Killer in Raph's deck. Uh, no real way to play around them in terms of uh, you're going to be cycling. Your Fox will get in range eventually. Here, though, Ra- Raph was just... Lee was really just trying to get the creature to a 2-2, uh, and then with one of the 2-2s after the attack, get down that Luminarch Aspirant using that Go for, go for Blood. In comes the Alciad. Going to buffer the life total of Levy here a little bit. Raphael Levy, for those of you who don't know, French Hall of Famer, a uh, once proclaimed the French national champion of jiu uh, jitsu, currently lives in Toulouse with his wife and uh, two kids. They recently welcomed a second into the world relatively recently. Lee, I, I like his build of cycling. You, you were mentioning it's. Low cost, it's basically no cost. Looking at this list, the only cost to having black mana is a single clear water pathway. Every other land is better than the basic land that Lee would be playing in a spot. Well, so... well no, actually, I'm in Field of Ruins. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Riley. Uh... Sorry, I, I was just presenting the well reason and thought out argument of the magic player there. Ah, of course. Just trying to, you're, just you're trying to relate to full Twitter experience. Just trying to relate to all the nerds out there. Am I right, Manny? All the all the magic nerds. Uh, Riley, I, I, I like being liked by the community somewhat. I'm gonna not comment on that. You're not. You're not gonna jump in here. 
No, I, wow, you're on your own for this. Confirmed coward here, Manny Davuti joining me in I, the booth today. I, in fact, cannot block warriors. So. Yeah, no, never. Manny sees a warrior, he's off the other way, like, nor on the bloody weary, mate. <laughs> he is selfless saviour. This Radan, not doing a huge amount when it comes to the uh, uh, the snow effect. that we've, we've seen it, in, especially in the mirror match, how, how crippling it can be against other snow-based aggro decks. But here... Just a 2-3 beater in the sky. This chop down's going to do some work, though, once the Flourishing Fox finally gets to 4 power. Yeah, I, this is Raph recognizing that I need to put some pressure on Lee. Cycling typically is very good against mid-range and control decks that don't really interact with its game plan while also being slow. Not as great against aggressive decks, which essentially force you into awkward spots. And Raph there, realizing, if I just let Lee have all the time in the world, I'm going to die to some Zenith Flares. So I, I need to start putting pressure on attacks with the Alcyon saying, either you block uh, with the Stinger, and I'll just sacrifice my selfless savior to keep my Alcyon alive, or you take some damage and I gain some life. Unexpected alliance here. Improbable. Oh, sorry, improbable alliance. It's not unexpected. It's an expected, but improbable. Well, I guess if it's improbable, people probably didn't expect it. But you have to expect the improbable playing at this level, Riley. Can you even expect the improbable? I, you always can. I guess you can. You can attempt to. <laughs> it might not be smart. <laughs> if you can conceive of the improbable, then I guess you can also expect it. That's true. In any case, it's we are seeing double time. improbable alliances, and now. We're going to chop down this fox. This fox grown a little bit too big for its boots here, and it's going to get chopped down by Jack. Improbable yeah. lines. Pops out a couple of 1-1s. One and this but is the reason the deck plays blue. This is the reason blue mana is important. This improbable alliance, we, we saw it do work yesterday in the hands of Corey Burkhart. We're mm -hmm. seeing it do work again here in the hands of Li Chi Tian. And this board state is very quickly becoming too much for Raph Levy to deal with. Yeah, yeah, and, and and like we've seen the fact that this cycling deck can play a couple of different strategies. It can go tall with flourishing fox, which is difficult for some decks to deal with. It can go wide with valiant rescuer and or improbable alliance, but it can also ignore all of that and just go straight for the live total with zenith flare. And Raf here is having to contest this game on so many different axes. And Lee at the moment seems equal to the task. We're going to see Faceless Haven get to uh, get busy here. The two support creatures ready to jump in and give their lives in service of the cause. Radan and Faceless Haven, well supported by the Alciad and the old dog there. Yeah, this is part of the power of this uh, mono white snow deck is you can play these medium-sized creatures that are disruptive to your opponents, and then you have a full eight creature suite of backup in the Alcyon, in the Safeless Savior. And yeah, I like getting in with the Alcyon. You still have the Savior back. This is a bit problematic for Lee because normally he would want to maybe triple block this Raydan and try to get it off the battlefield to give himself the opportunity of drawing a land and casting Boon of the Wish Giver. But with those protection creatures in play, that's not going to happen. And it, it, it looks like Lee is trying to force the hand of one of those sacrifices anyways. I like this. I like this, actually. You're overloading uh, Raph's options because you can't protect both creatures. Boon of the this Wish Giver is a good, really is... good block by Lee is a plan, probably plan C or D maybe even for four color cycling, but the fact that it can also cast the uh, the draw spell for its full value is important. But while Radan's out there, that's going to be a difficult thing to do here. I think Raf is probably going to want to save his god rather than his rather than his uh, nymph, I think. I, I, think I, I feel like you have to. That god is currently keeping Lee from having the ability to cast Zenith Flare. Yeah, I, I think you have it. to keep him alive job. as long as possible. Yes, indeed. So the Redane sticks around. Giant Killer comes down as well. And... Uh, Alright, that's the start. You get to cycle once on your turn. If you find another cycling card, you can cycle twice on your opponent's turn. That's four fairies between the turn cycles. 
uh, right, finds it as well. Cycle. Startling development, very nice indeed. So the double double cycle next turn will, yes, as you say, create two more fairies. And this is where things really start. Oh, no, okay. Doesn't want it. Instead puts Lurus in hand. Okay. But this is awkward now for Raph because, for Lee, because Raph can play the planes, animate a Faceless Haven, attack with the two Vigilance creatures, and tap down one of the fairies, essentially making it so Lee can't profitably triple block either of the creatures if he wanted to. Or just play the shield here, yeah, and now these fairies just do nothing. They just become effective just zero ones. Blockers. Yeah, they're just chump blockers, just little flying goat tokens, more or less. Lee hasn't shown a six land yet, so even if there is a Zenith Flare in that hand, it's not castable until there's a six land, so it, I like the shield. Ooh, and it makes... Zenith Flare costs one more mana. It essentially turns it off. Oh, this is... Raph is just making sure that Lee is slowly running out of options here. Yeah. Yeah. Redain, actually, wow. I was sort of like, oh, it's not, it doesn't do much in this matchup. It actually turns out it does a whole bunch. The Valkmira... The, the Valkmira, uh, both of the abilities are really useful here. And then Redain's, uh, you know, tax, I guess you could call it, the non-creature spells uh, that have uh, mana value of four or more costing two extra is it's actually surprisingly relevant. Yeah, the, so this shield coming down just completely shut off Improbable Alliance as a card. They are purely chump blockers now. And just a... Well, I mean, chump blockers are going to do some work, as we see here. Two lives saved. But yeah, Valkmira is, uh, is making its presence felt there. So we see Lurus now can bring back a, fl a Flourishing Fox, bring back a Drannith Stinger, Valiant Rescuer also an option, but it's going to be the Fox. Did we ever figure out what the Fox is? Do they bark? Uh, are, are you asking what Foxes say? I don't know. Yeah. I don't think we ever got an answer. I don't think we ever got an answer for that. I know no. people investigated the topic very thoroughly a couple of years ago. I, I definitely remember hearing whisperings of investigations, but... I don't it's think they go nee 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 as we were told. I think that wasn't. I don't. I don't know if I believe I, I that. I think that was ruled out as a possibility. Yeah, very early on in the investigation, although rumors did persist. Here's Halvar, the God of Battle, off the top here. All right. So, but now Raph just has to punch through damage, right? He has to get damage through these these zero one chump blockers. It's easier said than done. Lee just needs to find two lands essentially right now. While continuing to cycle. Zenithler at the moment, I think, doing six. Is that right? Uh, seven, I believe. Um, actually, there's a Valkyrie. Uh, well, actually. Actually, there's a Valkyrie as well. All right, there's a block. And now here's Halva coming down as a 4-4. Yeah, you, you just need the body. The sword is not doing anything for you here. And now it's going to be a, uh, a Valiant Rescuer coming back from the bin. Uh, More chump turn, blockers. Turning around here, exactly. Lurus is doing work. And unanswered Lurus for a couple of turns can be devastating. And here we're seeing just a, a bunch of free real estate put in the battlefield thanks to this Nightmare Cat. Yeah, back to six. Ooh, that, that is an answer for the shield. Shredded sails here? in the main Shredded deck. Sales. Is the Shredded the shield. That, is, that is very important. I'm going to do here. Tap down the fox, potentially. Yep. Yeah, Lee found the ever important six land. Once you get rid of the shield, six is all you need to cast Zenith Flare. So currently, Lee is in a spot where he has an answer to that shield. He has chump blockers. So there's no trample. Uh, Raph isn't really getting through. And if he makes an overconfident attack, thinking these fairies are just chump blockers, this shredded sails that is a two of in this main deck could heavily punish him, potentially. Yeah, Lee has really dug his heels in and refused to say die here. More of the Skyclaves under consideration for Raph. He's going to go for it. Let's see where he pops it. Of course, this will give anything double strike. Is that right with Halvar? Yeah, flying from the mall, double strike from Halvar's ability, but 
no tramples to be found anywhere on the board or even in the deck for this whitelist other than the singleton copy of Shadow Spear. Notably, with the three remaining copies of Alcide of Life's Bounty in the deck, uh, the white deck does still have access to protection to get through the uh, blue fairies for one of your flyers. We were talking about this interaction yesterday with uh, Sejiri Shelter uh, against the cycling deck in the matchup mm -hmm. of Nye Adventures against uh, three-color cycling, and now we're seeing it relevant again in this matchup. And I think here we'll see... One there, Maybe three the there. triple block yeah. on Redain. Yeah, yeah. This is everything for Lee now. An injudicious attack here from Raf, uh, thanks to the fact that this Shredded Sails is here. I to shred Raph not only the out. shield, but also Raf's hope in this game, I think. Yeah. I think Raf has figured out that's what's coming. Yeah, he's in big trouble now. The protection clause lost from the Valkmira here. And now... I mean, Halvar is fine, but Rodane's going down. Hey, this is really scary because there's eight in the graveyard right now. Uh, I think Lee might just be able to close out the game here if he... Not even just playing the stringer, Stinger. I think if Lee just attacks with everything, uses the starting, startling development as a pump spell on one of the 1-1s, one he would have been able to have lethal with the Zenith Flare. I guess there is the chop down in uh, Raph's hand to deal with a 4-4, four four, so uh, Lee playing around the possibility of that. Yeah, the, the budget giant, well, not even budget, it's double the cost of a giant growth here, but uh, I guess it's not the, uh, you know, what you might be hoping it for. Okay, so the, the mall is going to pop over onto the giant killer here. 3-4 double strike flyer. Got first strike and double strike. Whew. All, all the strikes. All the strikes. And no reason for Lee to attack at this point, I don't think. You can now cycle, just make more tokens, pass the turn back. Yeah, make more tokens. Um, maybe put more cyclers in the bin for that Zenith Flare as well. Not to mention the Dranith Stinger is also going to chip away at Raph Life. So I like this line from Lee. I think this is better stuff here. Yeah, this line is actually great as well, because oh, instead of cycling one on his turn, he's passing the turn with a guaranteed two cyclers, uh, which means that he's going to make tokens on Raph's turn. But Raph doesn't 100% know that Lee has those blockers. Yeah. So essentially, he's in a position where it, he could deceptively just create creatures. So it looks like he's just going for a Zenith Flare on the Halvar. Oh, wow. Okay, it's not something you see all the time. Very conservative play from Lee. Yeah, Lee seems to be confident that he's going to be able to win the long game here. There's an I, I don't think that was play. necessary. No. no, it's what we call in the coverage business an interesting play. I, I think Lee was very well off just cycling twice on Raph's turn, mm -hmm. making three more tokens, pinging Raph for two, untapping, ha having a Zenith Flare for nine, in hand. That's a huge attack. Right? Yeah. Like plus... I, that felt a little too conservative from Lee, I think. So Sky, Skyclave Apple D App here. Let's see where it's going to go. Take out the Lurus. That seems like the prime target. I mean, there's so many things that are causing headaches for Raph at the moment, but he is going to go for Lurus of the Dream Den. And that's the end of that. No attacks. Keeping up this chop down in case the flourishing fox gets out of uh, out of control. Three cyclers in the hand isn't too bad here. Yeah, that it's means all... tokens on both turn cycles now. So I mean a couple of one ones now from the improbable alliances. Mm -hmm. The flourishing fox now in chop down range, but Lee I think still still sitting pretty even with that taken into consideration. Yeah, I, I think Lee is feeling quite comfortable here now. Oh, and here's the attack. Here's the attack. This is a uh, startling development written all over it. Nope. Okay, not going to go for it. Yeah, I, I, I think Lee is committed to the conservative line now. There, there's no reason if he played last turn that safe for him to start getting loose here. Yep. Yep. yep, yep. 
no reason to cycle on end step either. You want to cycle twice on Raph's turn to make more tokens. And another giant killer here for Raph. I think that's giant killer number three. Yes, it is. Those are doing a good job of preventing Lee from... <laughs> yeah, Raph is just done. <laughs> Lee basically beat Raph into submission by just yeah. playing his cards. What's your win condition? My opponent getting bored. <laughs> <laughs> My opponent called it quits. My opponent's just having enough of, uh, of being trounced here. So that's the, end of, that's the end of game number one. They're going the way of Lee Shi Chan, famous Hong Kong player. And Raphael Levy here is uh, on the back foot as we head into game number two. On the back foot, not getting better. Uh, we said they aggro decks do a decent job against cycling uh that that is true game one is where you really need to take advantage of that because game two we see lee is boarding out some of the cycling cards that are worse in the matchup getting access to a board wipe more removal spells and another copy of the shredded sales that we saw was so important in that game and all raf is getting is essentially a shadow sphere glass casket is fine but you know, that that's not how Lee won that game. The Fox wasn't what did it. It was the Improbable Alliances, and mm. there's no answer to Improbable Alliances other than the four copies of Skyclave Apparition in the deck. They're going to be working overtime because there's so many targets they have to take out. I mean, the Shadow Spear can do some work, right? The Shadow Spear can punch damage through blockers, especially those 1-1, one -one, so it's useful there. But what Raph really needs is a nice quick start, and the hand that he's got right now offers that. That is a great quick start. Uh, we do see a copy of Shredded Sales sitting in Lee's hand. So not only an answer to the Maul itself, but also if the Maul goes on a Luminarch Aspirant, for example, just as a flyer, uh, Lee could use that to just kill the Aspirant before it gets a counter on. So certainly not the worst uh, set of answers in Lee's hand, and especially with that flourishing fox drawn for the second turn now, uh, Lee should be feeling great about his curve. So the flourishing fox comes in, offering oh, offering the trade here with the Luminarch Aspirant. Oh, it doesn't take it, <laughs> How though. generous of you, opponent! Uh, very generous. Oh, what indeed. could this be? And a valiant rescue coming down as well here. Double small of the skyclaves, though. This curve getting scarier and scarier from La Raph. Yeah, Maul into another Maul and a Shadow Sphere is pretty pretty disgusting. Let's see where this Maul goes. It could go on the Alcia just to... Do you, do you put all the eggs in one basket here? It's like that's hey, going to. I just want the life. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. You just want as much life gain as possible. Attacking in the air for five. This is now a Bane Slayer Angel. Oh, great draw from Lee. Yeah, ripper draw there in the form of Glass Casket. That can unpick all the best plan, best laid plans of Raphael Levy here. Yeah, Raph had to tap out for that mall, so it, Lee essentially gets his choice of whether he wants to get rid of the Alcyon, stop that lifelink, and get rid of the Flyer, or whether he wants to get rid of the Luminarch Aspirant to push some damage through. I think getting rid of the Alcyon makes more sense here, uh, but because... Lee doesn't know about the Shadow Spear, he may just be considering going for this improbable yeah. alliance with the intentions of chumping the Alcyon with a fairy token. I think that's what we're seeing here. I think we're just going to see the, the healer uh, cycled away for a bit of extra damage to the Fox and the 1-1 one, one, uh, to chump block the Alcyon. But little does Lee know the Shadow Spear is here to undo that plan, and there's still five damage coming across. Yeah, I think it's Last Shadow Spear for time for Raph. The way he's played this game has just been pure aggression, and I don't think he can take his foot off the gas now. Do you call it gas in Canada? Yeah. Do you actually? What would we call so, it? Oh, no, we call it petrol. No, no, no. We call or it fuel. gas. Call it gas. Yeah, it's funny how your a lot of your autom automotive terms, uh, the American ones, like you say, you spell tire incorrectly as well. Do you spell it with a Y? Yeah, spell the Y exactly. Yeah. Yeah, no, we don't do that. No, no, no. So strange. But you spell color with a U and organize with an S. Yeah. It, would you like our U's? The infinite mysteries of the English language. <laughs> who who knows them? Who who may who may who may say? All right, a couple of choices here for Raf. Looks like you may go for double maul. Yeah, put it on the aspirant to attack with both. Play the shadow spear. Maybe not even play the shadow spear, though. I think you should play the shadow spear. You're definitely overloading your opponent's artifact removal. So playing out the Shadow Spear here is, you know, it's not like that's the only target they've got 
for uh, for the shredded sails. So mall on the luminarch aspirant. We'll probably see it going to put a counter on itself as well. Yeah. Yeah. Try to distribute the damage as evenly as possible, and four damage coming across Natalishi Chan after the chump lock. Up to 29. Thinking about playing this Shadow Spear. Saves your mana later on, Raph, old son. Lee has options here. Uh, whether If Raph plays the Shadow Spear, Lee definitely has options. If Raph doesn't, Lee can just go for Glass Casket on the Alcyon and then uh, shred his sails down the Aspirant. Uh, essentially just re let Raph uh, stay alive with a bunch of overpriced equipment. Uh, but if Raph plays the Shadow Spear, then it may actually be worth consideration from Lee to want to just uh, just shred his sails down the Shadow Spear because it is one of the most important cards in the matchup for allowing Raph to break through chump blockers. All right, Raph's just going to pass. No Shadow Spear here, so the Alcyon is live, although we know that's probably not going to do any good against the Glass Casket here. That's yeah, what we're going to see, see first. So glass casket. Yep. And then I'll see it. Nothing really that can be done about that. You can sacrifice it in response in order to give uh, the Luminarch Aspirin protection from something, but then, you know, we can just cast the shredded cells in response to that so that's not gonna not gonna help either yeah you wouldn't want to give a protection from white because i believe that would make them all of the sky yes. fall off yes. um and that's the only thing that you would really preemptively give protection from in case of another glass casket uh from lee and there's only two caskets in the list so it's already unlikely uh you would never give a protection from red anyways and at least putting it under the glass casket means that should the game get to a point where you Skyclave Apparition that casket, you get your creature back. Definitely the right play there from Raph, just letting it get exiled, but he's in a really tight spot here. Can wake up the Faceless Haven, can't even equip anything to it, can just attack for four. But it's a not a particularly threatening attack when your opponent has infinite chump blockers, Zenith Flare in hand, and some pretty robust uh, uh, proactive attackers here. So the faces yeah. haven't chump blocked. And then now glass you can caskets. Cast it away the Valiant Rescuer. Mm -hmm. But there's still that very, very annoying improbable alliance here we have to contend with. Raph okay. is two mana away from play Shadow Spear equipped to an animated haven next turn, one mana away overall once the Shadow Spear is in place. So in two turns, Raph will start having access to a trampling uh, faceless haven uh, should he draw one more land. But that Zenith Flare can just answer the uh, the faceless haven. Ooh, Skyclad Apparition, you say. Okay, Raph sits up in his chair. This is an important yeah. draw. But where does Ask it go? Ask shall receive. Improbable Alliance has to be the pick, I think. Let's play it again with Luris, though. Oh, no, hey. no, it exiles, it exiles. Yeah. Excuse me. So sorry. Oh, man. This is... I wonder if Raph is considering the Glass Casket just to get a second creature onto the battlefield and hope that Maul plus Shadow Spear will be good enough. Looks at the graveyard for Loris. I think he's considering the casket. Yeah, to bring back the Elsid. Another warm body to hold those equipment. And it has inherent lifelink, so you can try to race with a maul on each creature and a shadow sphere on the apparition. This, this is not been a, a great, so scary. Not been a great Zenith Flare game here for Lishi Chan, who just hasn't been able to fill the graveyard. No, gonna gonna play it a bit safer. Go after that improbable alliance. Here's the shadow sphere after all, and now it is back to Lishi Chan. Oh, who finds? Oh my oh. goodness! Another shredded sails. <laughs> another shredded sails. <laughs> Holy moly! Oh god!
Well, that's going to make it very tough here. Very, very tough for Levy. Another shatter effect coming in clutch here for Lishi Chan. I think Lee can just pass here. Playing three copies total in this in the 75. Very, very useful card. It's really impressed me, Shredded Sails. You should look to include in your decks if they're, if they're playing red, in, even in the main deck. Kills dragons, kills ember cleaves, and, uh, and great henges. It's a good card, Bront. They're good cards, Bront. Here's the attack with the Flourishing Fox now. And the 1-1 one, one getting involved as well. Getting busy. Lee's plan is just a Zenith Flare. Uh... On the Skyclave Apparition, should Raph go for an equip? Yeah, um, I like leaving the Fox back. I don't think you need to get this aggressive here. Uh, this will force Raph into a situation uh, where he'll need to equip to do anything. And then you have the Zenith Flare. And you pounce. pounce. Yes. So there's the Shadow Spear equip. Yep. A little bit of mistapping from Raf. Uh, I think he would have wanted to tap two planes to give himself the option of animating Faceless Haven by playing that planes in his hand. Not going to matter, though. Raf thinking about maybe also suiting it up with a, uh, a Skyclave. Oh, sorry, a sort of more of the Skyclave. But he's like, there's just no way he gets out of this. Yeah, and this is actually the reason I didn't like uh, playing the Triumph from Lee's point of view. I think there was a reasonable point uh, line of play where you basically get Raf to walk into this board state, mm. uh, make these plays attack, and then you can shred its sails the Maul, make the Skyclave Apparition a 3-3 ground creature, block with the Fox, cycle the Triumph, make it a 4-4, and cleanly eat everything while having access to everything you have in hand i don't know if he needed that sixth land in play uh and now he's being used to fourth being forced to use the zenith flare which was a good answer to that faceless haven yeah well there's five prophecy off the top so don't worry about that the faceless haven is still getting answered and raf's getting absolutely Ra raf's getting rump dumped here this is there's no there's no other way to describe it dranath healer as well in come the clowns raf down to 14 he's built up a bit of a life total buffer finds another faceless haven but this is not going to be good enough i mean this, this is, this is five lifelink damage coming across it, it's not nothing but it's not great no. it, it, it is certainly not the race that he would want here Lee does not need to block. No worries about dying. Luris is going to gain back some of the life. Dranath Healer is going to gain back some of the life. This is just... Oh, the third shred. Another shredded sails as well. Another <laughs> shredded sails. Raph's like, oh, look at all my cool artifacts. And Lee's like, no. Nah, buddy. You don't get to play with these today. Not today, my friend. This is just not Raph's game. Not Raph's game today. It hasn't been Raph's match. Raph down to eight now. Lee up to ten. And three premium pieces of removal. And, oh, geez, a bit of a shake of the head, a bit of a raise of the yeah. eyebrows there for old mate Raph Levy, who... It's getting to him. You can see it getting to him. Just keeps drawing land, mate. It's just frustrating. Yeah, it really is. It really, yeah, really I think is. Lee may use a shred of sails to get his Valiant Rescuer back on the Zen step. Yeah. Uh, knows he has a Fire Prophecy uh, to deal with a blocker. Yeah, I, I think, honestly, he could even get aggressive enough to cycle the other uh, Shred of Sails after you have the Rescuer to make a token and just try for a lethal push here. Yeah, another resigned shake of the head here for Raph as the Shredded Sails takes out the Glass Cask. Gets Second to give back to three, one. three Shredded Sails. And another one as well, just, just to rub it in here. Just yeah, to rub it, it in. Cycles it yeah, away, look at Raph. Look at, the look at his face. <laughs> Look at his face, Lishi Chan just flexing on him. Oh, he can't believe his luck oh, here. This, Poor oh, old Raph. And the savage good game from Lishi Chan as well. Top shelf BM here <laughs> as part of this league weekend. Use it six times. Use it eight times. Yeah, Raph's going to make sure he uses all his mana for the turn. Really, really important, of course. And in they come. A 2-0 victory oh, yes. for Lishi Chan. <laughs> And that is that. Well done to him, Raph Levy. An unfortunate loss for the French Hall of Fame.